to the International Dyno Authority. This is a 477 cubic inch big block Chevy. This is Al Nadeau. I'm Mark. I'll be tuning this here today. We're going to break this in. We're going to do some heat cycles, which means we'll get the rings broken into the cylinder walls. We'll get the engine so that it's tuned correctly, so that it runs correctly, it starts well, and we can go out the entire season with this motor, have all kinds of fun, but make power. And he's stepping up a class this year. So he wants to make sure this is crispy and ready to go. The actors here have not got a clue. An alcohol motor that burns methanol can be a very big challenge to get its initial startup. This one was leaking, so not providing proper pressure, and we really had a challenge to make everything work to get this started. When we started this morning, things went fairly smoothly. Motor came in, we put it on the cart, we put it on the dyno. When we started to hook up all the systems, everything's going pretty good throttle, fuel, all those kind of things are going to, then we got to the ignition and we had to repin the ignition because it was an older version of an MSD plug. So we've completely repinned it now. Then rolling it over, we were having a hard time because it's an alcohol motor and they're not necessarily the best starting. And there was a O-ring that's leaking and it's not giving us all the fuel pressure that we could use in order to make this run correctly. So we tried a few different techniques and then the starter quick because we'd rolled it so many times took the starter apart, rebuilt the starter, put the starter back on. We've now got it started up and the O-ring is just leaking so bad. We're gonna run out, go to a store, see if we can't get a new O-ring, put it back in, get this alcohol beast up and running. The O-ring in this system is part of the Ron's toilet fuel injection. It maintains fuel pressure when the engine is off to allow us to start the engine easily each time. There we go. Now that the engine starts nicely, we're able to run the motor, we're able to monitor each one of the systems, and if you look on the screen, you're going to see, we actually see the EGTs, we see the oil pressure, we see the fuel pressure, we see the RPM, and now we're going to warm this up and do just a little bit of a break-in on it so that the rings can seat into the cylinder walls. That's all the alcohol mixing with the oil. Which that's all normal, so that's why I, I put the block heaters. I plug in my car two hours before, and uh, it separates the oil from the alcohol. I do a run, uh, it takes me about uh, five seconds, mid five seconds, and I plug it back. I plug it as soon as I've done my run, and my oil always stays perfectly clear. All right, Al's just making an oil change at this point. Want to make sure we have nice fresh oil. We're just about to do our uh, break-in portion on this. Um, they, they run a methanol oil in this that absorbs and works with the methanol so that it doesn't um, screw up the bearings and the oil pressure. We're putting fresh oil in. We're going to do a quick break-in, and right after the break-in, we're going to make our first pass. All right, mainly when we're doing a break-in, we're just seating the rings into the cylinder wall. Everything else is gonna scrub off any little pieces and parts from machining that were left over. And the main thing we wanna do is get the rings so that they pick up the crosshatch. They start to wear into the cylinder wall just a little bit. That's called a break-in. During the break-in portion with a customer's engine, we're able to monitor each one of the systems and independently work with the load and hold the throttle where it needs to be and then move the throttle and work with the load so that the rings can seal and seat into and get a maximum amount of compression so that this engine will run the absolute best it can.
Here we notice that the engine just does not want to take the throttle. It really is running rough. It can't burn the fuel that is being fed to it. And we're monitoring that. There's nothing we can do until we start to make changes. But at this point, the engine's really rough and it will not take the throttle. All right, we just ran through um, doing some braking on it, putting it under some load. Unfortunately, with a methanol motor, there's only so long you're going to get, but it's a race motor. It's got its break-in time by now. We've had it running long enough. It's making good compression. We did a small mini pass, so we started here 3,700, and we went up to 5,500, just a little pass, and you can see it's running pretty good. It suffered in here a little bit, but it takes off good. It way too much fuel through here. Um, we're going to take a look at that, but it's just going straight up. And this is just a rev limiter that's shut down here. So we're going to go in, we're going to raise the, the rev limiter up, and um, then we're going to make a couple more passes and uh, start tuning this. And we're going to get our AFR now. Right now we're watching the AFR and we're noticing that the numbers do not change to anything that is a respectable number. We are looking for anything 5 and above. 4 means that there's just way too much fuel going into this motor. We're monitoring each one of the systems, but the AFR is our big concern here. feel good it feels lazy it's slow to come through and now we start our tuning process on this motor the way we work through the tuning process is pretty straightforward we want to see a thousand degrees on the EGT we want to see the air fuel come up somewhere in the fives and we would like to get our ignition timing corrected once we have the fuel done right now the engines not running correctly and we are really not seeing a result that we want to see now we're going to take the telemetry that we pulled we're going to look at the report and we're going to start to make changes and make improvements it is so rich it's unbelievable we got to get some fuel out of it i'll pull a report here but i don't think it ever gets like we should be somewhere in the high sixes low sevens i'm going to bet we're in the fours yeah there's enough there to, to run an alcohol funny car. It never it never leans out. It just goes rich, 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 and richer. One of the processes that we're following on this motor is EGT or exhaust gas temperature. And what we want to see is the motor warm up and it's at the proper coolant temperature, but also the exhaust needs to make a thousand degrees. Otherwise it just won't make any power and it doesn't run correctly. We're just going through a general warm up process to make sure that the engine is actually the same every time we make a pass. put some timing in it look where it went yeah it jumped up that's better it felt better too it still feels like it's hitting against a rev limiter sure. yeah now let's take a look at our fuel imagine once we get some fuel out of this that's what you're feeling right because that's yeah. beautiful would it make 566 and then 700 now we're going to start doing it Oof, it's rich as hell okay we're going to put some uh <laughs> we're going to put a bigger hole in your in your return I don't know what you got for size, but let's make 75. a bit of a jump. I got a 75. Okay, let's make a jump. Reach 75, man. Go from there. 
All right, so we've made a couple of small passes, actually three small passes. We know roughly where we are. The last pass had made um, 700 horse. For all intents and purposes, it was 698 horse, but there is so much fuel going through this thing. We were finally able to get the temperature up, so we're, we're pretty good on temperature here. Um, we're making about a thousand degrees, or just a little bit better than a thousand degrees of exhaust temperature, somewhere around 1100. And we're monitoring that, but the fuel where we should be seeing somewhere in the AFR range of methanol, um, between six and seven to make this run at uh, healthy, it's running at 4.3, 4.4. So it's like beyond crazy stupid rich as far as that goes. So. The way you make changes on the system is to do what Al's doing. Yeah, to change the jetting uh, in a carburetor uh, because there was uh, it was over fueling way too much fuel, and uh, it's called uh, a pill. The pill is number was a 75, and now I put in an 86. So the way the it works for an alcohol motor, you uh, you jet on your return line, any carburetor line or gasoline car. The, uh, you jet by uh, the pressure side, but in alcohol you do it on the reverse side on the, the return line. Yeah. With a spark plug there's only a few things you're going to learn and you have to have looked at them a lot. You're going to look at the strap, you're going to see how far down the strap we're burning, how much heat we have coming in around the plug, how many threads are burning down, it's harder to see in a methanol plug, and then down inside the porcelain how far up is the fuel staining. Right now, we're not getting any heat. We're safe. We're well within beyond safe. That's why we're taking a bunch of fuel out. We're gonna make a change, then we'll look at the plug again. The Ron's toilet style fuel injection system is not actually like electronic fuel injection. These are actually just nozzles. So as you watch here, you're gonna see the pressure gauge the pressure gauge provides the fuel so that it can be dispersed into the engine, but it just comes through a nozzle. So there's nothing actually electronically stopping it. It just pumps it in all the time. In contrast, and this is a stark contrast, your modern vehicle actually has a pinto valve that spurts fuel as necessary. Not all the time just draining the fuel in because there's pressure there. What are you doing now? So now I had to uh, change the jetting again. We had to uh, make a uh, make it bigger. Now we got an 89. All right. What we're doing now is just simply making a small idle adjustment, and it's more than anything else just to make it easier to start. Starts fine. You just got to give it a bit of throttle to kind of get it going. We've been um, we definitely had our woes with getting this started, but now we just make a small adjustment, bring this up, let a little bit, let more air in, bring the idle up a little bit. Even at low speed here, we can see a huge difference. The engine is now crisp, it now starts good. It runs good, it responds to the throttle. We went a little bit too far, which is what we wanted to do, but at this point, this engine is now ready to go. Uh, we had to bring back down the, the jetting because the numbers weren't constant. So we brought it back down to, what was it, Mark? I forgot that. 86. 86. We had 89, and now we brought it down to 86. And then we'll see what happens from now. It's more consistent at uh, 86. I think what's fooling us a little bit on the AFR, because it's really stupid rich, and yet it's not running stupid rich. At the beginning, it was so rich I could barely make it go. Yeah. Now it's kind of running good, but we're running uh, the oxygenated fuel, and the oxygenated fuel reads um, different on the sensor. So I went in and I found the calibration for the oxygenated and we're going to try that. And we already know from asking the motor, yeah. it's happier at 86 than it is at 89. It just lost power and didn't rev up correctly. So. 
We're doing a valve adjustment and a valve maintenance. It's the first one. We're checking to see if any of them are loose. And specifically what we're doing is there are aluminum parts and steel parts inside the motor. And we want to make sure that they have room to expand and contract. So we're going to check the actual, what's called the lash, which is in between the top of the rocker and the valve and see where it is. It's supposed to be at 28. It's very loose right now. So we're going to tighten up the lash just a little bit, which will give it more cam. It'll give it a chance to make more power and it keeps the engine in tune. So we're going to do that with 28 thousandths, which is what the um, engine builder has, has uh, recommended and 32 thousandths on the exhaust. Now the, I can tell you right now that the, the, uh, the exhaust is uh, is right on. Sorry, this is the exhaust here. So the exhaust is loose, and then 28 over here on the intake. And the intake's eh, it's close. It, it can use a bit of an adjustment too. When you're pulling that out, you should feel a bit of tension. That's just kind of really loose. But what we do is we tighten it till we just feel a bit of tension, so it sort of slides out, and we have 28 thousandths between the rocker and the top of the valve. sounded good it felt really really good that time like nice holy crap oh yeah Woohoo! yes sir yes sir that's new here right here that's why you came here wow man told you that felt good we had to go back a bit and then give it a bit of timing you see where it's going up top too yeah it just goes. It just keeps going, man. <laughs> That's the first time it did that, Freddy. Yeah. Good yeah. eh? Hey, we tuned this 477 of Alnado's today. We made our way through the fueling. We checked the timing. We really had a challenge to make everything work together. But once we got everything working together, absolutely awesome. This is a good engine. I'm going to tell you, when we shut down, we did the valve adjustment. And then we started playing with the timing just a little bit. We got to that magic number where this engine likes. We let the engine talk to us. It told us what it needed. It told us what pill it needed in the, in the return. It told us what timing it needed. And when we're all done, 924 horsepower, 727 foot-pounds of torque, that's what this machine should make. It's going to go fast in there. It's going to be a lot of fun to drive in. We had a lot of fun <laughs> yes. tuning this. That was awesome. Absolutely. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. So today was a pretty amazing day. I, I learned lots how uh, the fuel burns, how to uh, read a spark plug uh, the, the right, uh, for the right fueling. Uh, learned uh, how to drill a pill with the special bit that they're written with a number. We started with a, a 75 yeah. and we ended up with an 86. And uh, I burned uh, three quarters or less alcohol and it's very snappy. I'm very, uh, very impressed, and I'm pleased to meet you guys. And it's a pleasure working with you, Mark. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you very much. You're I will let you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So now I'm gonna move up to the next step. I got a. Now I got the, a lot of diagram. That's how you call it. So now they're gonna make a torque for me for the weight of my car. My car is 1,900 pounds. I make a torque, and then I'm gonna make a, the suspension work. So it's all gonna work together. It's a. It's going to be a pretty amazing combination. I'm very looking forward to it. Thank you very much.